Hi everyone, my name is Rodrigo Tomas. I'm an applications engineer at Bosch Rexroth US. In the next few weeks, I'll be releasing a series of videos that will go over our motion platform. So we'll navigate through our drive technology, motion control technology, CNC technology. Uh, of course, we'll talk about programming, libraries, everything that we can offer to make your life easier when building and creating your new machine. In the first video of the series, we'll talk about IndraWorks, which is our development and configuration software platform that concentrates all our technology, since servo drives, motion controllers, robot controllers, HMIs and everything. So in this video, we'll have an overview of the main features of IndraWorks itself. So we are not going to talk about the device that can be controlled and configured through it. Okay, so uh, we'll go back and talk specifically about each one of the products uh, when we get a video about those products, okay? Different IndraWorks licenses are available. The first one we'll talk about is IndraWorks DS that's free, can be downloaded through our website and can be used to configure and to parameterize and troubleshoot intro drives and EFC drives, basically. Um, other licenses available are MLD, uh, and MLD stands for Motion Logic Drive Based, uh, and it means the motion controllers embedded inside our intro drive platform. So this is MLD. We have IndraWorks MLX and ML standing for uh, stands for motion logic and X means both control based and drive based, which means with MLX you can use IndraWorks to configure, to program, and to troubleshoot both our motion controllers, the standalone motion controllers, and also the MLD, which is the motion controller inside the drive. The last one is IndraWorks MTX, and MTX is our um, numerical controller platform, uh, or CNC, as we know. Um, so those are the three licenses available for IndraWorks. And again, the one that we'll start talking about first uh, is IndraWorks DS. It's important to mention that uh, IndraWorks MLD, IndraWorks MLX, and IndraWorks MTX are also known as IndraWorks Engineering because it's more powerful, you can create projects inside, you can, um, you can save files, so it's more than just a simple automation software. Uh, okay, so let's start talking about the main features of IndraWorks DS. The first thing we'll talk about IndraWorks is that the same feature can be found in many different locations, sometimes more than two. Uh, so, for example, the first one we'll do is the connection. So we'll connect your device and the same icon is located in the stop bar or also under tools and connections and then you see select connection. So the functionality is exactly the same, just in a different location. So let's click on this. Let's start by the network search. You probably noticed that there is a, a device here already available and I can connect to it. The reason it shows up immediately is because I'm using um, a new version of firmware, which is the, the latest one, which is firmware 20. And IndroDrive under this firmware 20, it actually sends like a ping message to IndroWorks. Uh, so if, as long as you are physically connected to it, it will find your computer or your computer will find your hardware, uh, regardless of your computer uh, fixed IP range. Uh, if the IP range is not correct, 
it would show up here in red instead. And then you wouldn't be able to really connect to it until you define the correct uh, fixed IP address on your computer. In my case, it's already configured. If I wasn't, I could just click here and then I'll just go on my Windows configuration and do it. Um, so the next tab here, we can actually use like a, a, a search, a search range. So you can define like a number and the IndraWorks would start pinging all of the all the IPs and the first one that replies it just shows you under this list so let me stop it's not what I want right now serial communication as we know um, older technology older drives not really uh, used with the new platforms but very useful for a device that are on the field uh, many of them still have a serial communication and the country unit, um, some specific uh, communication controls that we're not going to talk about today. And this one is really useful, which is offline. So offline means that you can actually open a parameter file specifically for Indio Drive or our EFC drives. You can uh, use a parameter file and look to the configuration as if you were connected to a drive, but it's an offline mode instead. So let's start playing with Indio Drive. Uh, and as we know, we have the drive already here available. I'll just click on it. So again, many icons and features of Indio Works are device related and they will show up or not depending on the device that I'm connected to. Uh, so far, those specific icons and features I won't talk about today. I will leave this topic for when we talk about the specific device that they belong to, okay? Uh, so that said, let's get started with IndraWorks and I hope you like its features. The first thing we'll talk about are the help files. So the help files are a collection of data related to the device uh, that can be controlled or configured uh, with the specific Indoorworks version that you are using. Um, remember that we just talked about Indoorworks version um, MLC, MLD, DS, MTX. Uh, within this Indoorworks that we are using right now, that is Indoorworks DS, we'll find information pretty much about the drives, intro drives and frequency converter drives, which is uh, the EFC drives. So the drive that we are using uh, in this demonstration now is version 20. So I will come to intro drive MT MTX 20 and I'll click here. So we should see the help file popping up in a few seconds, there we go. Once we start exploring the help file, it actually make it easy for us to understand why Indoorworks installation package is so big. So as you can see, there's a huge amount of information underneath uh, each node. So you, we can keep navigating forever here. Um, for that reason, uh, the help files actually come with a set of um, search tools that are actually very useful. So for example, we have this index tab right here. Uh, and let's say we are looking for a drive air, which is F2020, which is excessive deviation. So we can see here, uh, we have the air, we have a list of other errors as well that show up. So I can double click on this information. So I have specific information about the air but more than that, I can actually come to locate and click here. So it will bring me to the tree and show exactly where this topic is stored under. So let's say that actually you don't know the, the number of default, but instead you know the name. Uh, because if we come back here and just type uh, excessive 
you see that the error actually doesn't show up. So let me just cut this one. I'll move to search. I'll paste it there, excessive deviation. And I will hit enter. And then we can, of course, navigate and we'll find excessive deviation right here. So of course, it's already open. And again, I can click on locate and it will bring me to the exact location uh, where it's uh, stored under the the structured tree. So besides faults uh, of the devices, of course, we can find uh, additional information about the hardware, for example, Intel Drive X31, which is a digital input um, connection on the Intel Drive itself. So I can find it here, I can double click, I can come to locate, for example, and see exactly where it is. Um, or even parameters. So let's say we'll do here uh, S-0-0051, which is position feedback. So same thing. So yeah, uh, everything that you can actually find under our PDF manuals are available under IndroWorks. So if you have IndroWorks with help file installed on your computer, before wasting time looking on the PDFs, I would strongly suggest you to come here and search inside your help file. One of the most important features of IndraWorks is the oscilloscope. And the oscilloscope definitely deserves a video by itself, just showing its potential and everything it can do, and will certainly do it in the future. Uh, but let's just have a quick overview now. So let me open the oscilloscope here. Let's make sure to expand it. With the oscilloscope, you can actually record uh, a lot of data from the drive. And by, by data, I mean uh, feedbacks, commands, diagnostics, uh, and many other signals that happen inside the drive. You can actually record. Um, and we'll let's let's navigate and see uh what we can do like uh it's, it's just gonna be like a base basic overview for now and let's start by configuring the time the recording time so we'll go to configure uh, resolution area so the resolution is like how much memory you want to allocate to record so let's say that i want to do like a four Four thousand um, memory depth here. So as you can see, as I change my value here, uh, the recording time will change as well. So right now I have only two seconds recording time. So let me expand this uh, sample time from half a second to one second. So again, you see that it has been updated on the top. So now we have four second recording. I will confirm. Uh, let's configure our signal trigger. Uh, and the signal trigger can actually be a signal itself, which is a parameter that records and will trigger the oscilloscope based on its value. Uh, or it can be a manual or even automatic trigger, which is pretty much the same thing. One, the automatic will just require you to, set, to say start, uh, or the manual you need to say start and then trigger. Um, so, but overall it's just the same thing. Uh, but the signal trigger is actually important for us to know. Uh, let me just go back to signal trigger here. And as the first, the first thing that is important to mention about the trigger is the pre-trigger. And pre-trigger means uh, what is the percentage that I want to record before the trigger happens. So if my trigger happens right now, uh, the way it is configured, I will display 15% uh, before and 85% after the trigger. Uh, and my trigger is configured as a position feedback, and the position feedback uh, will execute the trigger once it reaches uh, 180 on the way up. If you look to the edge, I'm saying to the rising edge, which means it will trigger the recording process uh, on the way up. So once I cross this red bar here, you'll see that the black uh, the black uh, sign uh, is actually going on. It's a 360 degrees motion uh, happening right now. 
So once my axis uh, go across this red bar uh, moving up, uh, the drive, the, the oscilloscope will start. So let's just hit OK. And the next thing we need to do is actually to select signals that we want to record. So let me come, I will come here. As you see, the position feedback is already here. Uh, let's select a few more items such as velocity feedback or in torque feedback, for example, which is 84, S84. Of course, I could select other others as well, but let's stick with those two. Uh, let me see if there's something important that might make sense for us to have in our list there. Well, diagnostic message might make some sense, so let me just click on this one. And I'm hitting OK. So I will start. OK, as you see, it has crossed the 180, it's triggered, it's recorded. And here it is. Uh, so now we have a recording process. We can come now to the next step that's called Analyze. Uh, and then I can do like automatic adjustments that will do some adjustments for myself. I can do, I can of course select uh, each signal and change its scaling by using the, the scaling tools here. Uh, there is like the zoom thing that I can click, I can go again and do the automatic scale thing or if you do actually if you hold control uh, on your keyboard and drag the image to the left or right or up and down you can do it manually as well so that's uh, something important to know uh, of course you can hide signals that are not important for you so let's just hide this one you can scroll it uh, as you see this is my trigger the red vertical bar right here 15 percent before 85 percent after um, so let's hide some other like the, the torque as well so now everything we have is the velocity feedback here if I hide this one and just show uh, the position feedback, as you can see, uh, the, the axis, the motion profile that is happening right now, it actually stays on top of zero. And as the, the axis servo is servoing on top of zero, it's actually servoing uh, in between zero and 360. And that's the reason you see uh, this uh, square here. It's because the axis is actually sitting on 360 which means at the same time 360 and zero. So that's the reason it shows this uh, kind of strange um, feedback here. But actually what it means is that it's very clear as it moves, you see it's very, um, a lot of resolution. Um, so yeah, uh, this was a basic overview of the oscilloscope of the drive. So here's the parameter editor area. So if you are dealing with both intro drive or the frequency converter drives, EFCs, you will see that this uh, little box here is very useful. So as you can see, we have now uh, the position feedback right there. And I can come here and of course type something else as S-0 dash 0040 which is my velocity feedback of the drive but instead of typing the entire number with the dashes and everything we could instead just come here and say let's go back to position feedback and just type s 51 and the box will fill it up automatically for you uh, and again if we do s 40 here's the velocity feedback s 84 Here's torque feedback. Um, more than that, if you have questions about this specific parameter that you are looking for, you can just come here to this little uh, question mark, click on it, and it will bring the information from the help file right to your window with all the information about this parameter and everything. So it's really useful. Okay, um, 
Another thing, maybe you need a parameter that you actually don't know the number. And that's of course that's very useful if you are not uh, really familiar with the drive. So let's look. Let's search here for velocity, velocity, and feedback. Right. So again, I clicked on this button right here, this one, and we can type it. This is the name, and it Indraworks will list for you all the parameters that bring velocity feedback in the name uh, and the one that we are looking for is as velocity feedback value of encoder which is this one so if I double click there the velocity feedback will open here so let's say that you actually want to watch several parameters at the same time instead of searching by each one every few minutes you can actually do a group so you have this empty little box here right there and then I can click on this icon right here and as I click it my parameter will go and be sent to the parameter group box let's use this drop down menu to select test uh, parameters so let's select the torque feedback and again I will use Send to the group and now I'll select the position feedback and again send it there. Um, of course, you can uh, sort it by clicking so uh, the way you want. If you want to sort by name, you can do it by value, you can do it as well. Or even if you want to do it manually, you can use this down or up, of course, up and down, and you can organize it. But more than that, uh, this little group is very useful if you want to keep it for a future work. So you can whether save the group itself, which is the number and the name, by doing the save here. Uh, or if you actually want to save the number, the name, and the, the last value of this parameter, uh, in case you want to have like a backup, of the information that's stored under this group, you can actually come here and do a parameter save. Okay. All right, let's talk about IndraWorks Engineering. So, IndraWorks Engineering is an extended version of IndraWorks that provides access to Rexroth uh, drives, HMIs, controls. Uh, and the library that you see on your right side will be updated according to the version or the license that you are using. As we talked before, there are different licenses that can be IndraWorks MLC, MLD, uh, MTX. And depending on what version you are using, you may see a different selection of devices stored under uh, this library here. So this library contain drives and controls, visualizations, which is uh, which are our HMI uh, selection, um, and other components as well that may be displayed under this area here. So unlike uh, IndraWorks DS, that is a connection-based software, the IndraWorks Engineering as you can see on the header right there. Uh, IndraWorks Engineering is a project-based software. So we can actually create a project and control and maintain and test several devices simultaneously. Once again, IndraWorks offers the very same feature or the very same icon in different locations. So we'll see here create a new project or here as well create a new project which is the same icon. I'll just click there and now we can come here and we have like an empty project we can give it a name so let me call it project uh, test whatever. The version that I'm using here specifically is 15 V04. 
and I'll hit of course I need to select destinations so in my case I'm doing the road projects you can select whatever is uh, better for your for in your computer let's move forward here I'll hit OK and now as we can see we have a project there and then we can start loading uh, the components so the components can be controllers drives HMIs and everything that we offer right so again I can come here and say add and add a component or I can select a component directly on on the menu options here uh, or instead I can come here and select from here and drag from here to there okay so here I would move forward and create my MLC so I don't want to create confusions on everybody's head uh, we'll have a video specifically talking about MLC and Indio Drive so and HMI in the future as well so let's skip this topic right now so I will cancel this okay, so let's say that we have a huge project here with our entire automation components uh, under this tree and we want now to save it so how we must save it of course first of all we can save the project itself by doing uh, that we already did when we created the project actually so we have a project file and as you can see uh, on this um, little um, info box that shows up you see that it's called project test that uh, dot x i w p so this is our project file, uh, but a better backup would be a archive. So by coming here to the archive, I click there, and then I will give it a name. I will move next. I can give it a password if you want to protect it. Uh, you select the destination so in my case I will save it under D video training which is good for me you can actually depending on the hardware that you are using so let's say if you are using our motion controller or our drive uh, Indro drive uh, depending on the version of Indro drive you can actually save it in the memory of the drive or the controller itself so we could actually select this FTP uh, and select uh, an IP address, let's say 192.168.1.1 for example and then I would save this zip backup project on both my computer and on the device itself so in my case I don't want to save it on the device just on my computer so I can hit next and then it will give you some information about your project of course my project is empty right now so I just hit finish and then I have uh, my zip file created and ready to be used uh, in the future. So let's say we are done with our project. So now we have created an archive with it. And then in the next opportunity, we want to restore it. Uh, so again, we can do it whether here, restore project. We can do it here as well, which is the same icon. So we can click there, restore. If we had saved the package inside the drive or inside the controller by using FTP, we could do this option as we have not. So I just saved it on my computer. I'll do restore from file system. I'll move next. I'll look in the folder where uh, it has been stored, which is the training. So I'll just move forward here and then I'll select the destination folder for the project that will be restored. Uh, I will move next. I will click on finish here and just close. So now here's my project. Of course, as you remember, we didn't create anything underneath, uh, just the project itself. So, but that's all we needed. Uh, and it's important to, to tell you that once you do this um, archive and restore process, uh, we can actually select on depending on the hardware that you are using but you can pretty much save everything since PLC uh, configuration uh, the programs that you created the parameters that you created and also if you want to add files to your project you can actually come here 
So let's say I will first add some folder. I will call it uh, par files, for example. And then under the par files, I can actually do add file. And then by searching on my computer, and I will be able to load pretty much any file, uh, like videos or PDFs or Excel files or whatever thing uh, you want to save. Um, under your project so every time you create an archive and restore it you will have the entire thing uh, with your project in a single file so you don't need to manage like different folders everything will be uh, within your project so it's going to be a lot of information uh, useful information stored uh, in the same location making it easier for you to maintain your project As we used in the drive in an example uh, in the first part of the training where we talked about uh, IndroWorks DS. So let me just run a quick demonstration here how it, the, the same thing would work under IndroWorks Engineering. Uh, so let me get rid of this part file. I'll just hit, oops, I'll just hit delete here. Uh, and then I could whether do like a drag and drop here as we talked. Uh, or I could come here and say add and say Indra Drive. So by using this um, method, I can actually import and create an Indra Drive uh, based on a parameter file. Uh, I can actually configure it manually by typing uh, just the, the firmware that I'm using. Uh, or if I have no source, I can actually come and also configure it by using the part number in case you know what what is your uh, what the drive what is the drive that you have. So, but in my case, I actually want I'm already connected to a drive. So let's do something similar uh, to what we did before by using this option here: scan for device. Uh, again, the same icon is right there. So we need here in this case select Indra Drive and send it to the scan for area uh, by using those buttons here. And I will hit next. Uh, we have again two methods here. Uh, this little wizard it actually uh, seems to be a little different, but it works exactly the same way as we saw uh, at IndraWorks DS, so where we have uh, the IP search. So again, the IP search, you can type a, sp a specific range uh, and IndraWorks will ping your Indra drive and see which one is available. Or instead, uh, we can use the network search and select the correct network card on your computer and hit next. And IndraWorks will do it automatically for you. And as you see, my uh, Indra Drive is available here. I can just hit finish. And here is my um, my Indra Drive under the project now. And again, uh, if I want to save it, uh, I can just come and do archive as we saw a few minutes ago. And that's it for IndraWorks engineering as well. I think. Um, we covered the most important features. Again, uh, we'll talk about many features again as we discuss each hardware specifically. Uh, and if you guys have questions about IndraWorks or about IndraDrive, please uh, leave a comment below uh, this video uh, or also reach out to us through our uh, uh, online forum. Uh, the link will be under this video in the uh, in the description area. Oh, well, thanks for watching this video uh, until here. I appreciate your attention, and um, I hope I'll see you next time in the same channel. Thank you. Bye. So, if you like this video and if you'd like to learn more about Rexroth technology, please hit subscribe below and click on the notifications button so you will be notified when a new video is available. Thanks for watching.
See you next time.